The Fighting Phils have thrown all the punches so far this series. They've dominated on the mound, and they've knocked the ball all over the yard. Charged with taking on the Phillies today is Barry Zito. The lefty has been lights out at home this season. And now he's looking to get the orange and black back on track next. Day baseball here at AT&T Park as we get ready to wrap up this three game series Phillies and Giants. Hi again everybody I'm Dwayne Kuyper alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well day game after a night game you got a couple of guys that uh, need a day off Posey Pagan. So Mike there's some different people in this lineup. I guess the bottom line is you got to scratch and claw and play a little little ball. Well, I think that's really what's going to get it back on track. I mean, you think about it, the Giants have 19 victories this year. 11 of them are comeback victories. And in these first two games against the Phillies, they haven't been able to come back. Right. The Phillies pitching has really kept them quiet. So when that happens, don't try to aim for the free run homer. Go back to what got you here, and that's play the little ball. And that's what's going to get them out of this funk against the Phillies today. All right, Barry Zito on the hill. And when we come back, Amy G, she's going to take a look at Barry Zito and some of his magic at home. Zito on the hill today. Amy G on Barry Zito right after this. Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. The Chipotle Chicken Club Combo is back for a limited time at Jack in the Box. Try one today with fries and a drink for just $4.99 plus tax. And by Toyota. Do the math and save at your local Toyota dealer.
Well, after losing two in a row to the Phillies, your Giants are looking to avoid the sweep today and salvage a win in the final game of this three-game series. Welcome back to AT&T Park. I'm Amy Gutierrez, and the Giants are looking for that starting pitching to get on track. They've posted just two quality starts in their last 10 games, and today they hand the ball over to Barry Zito. He's off to a good season, a 3-1 and one record, a 3.06 ERA, but at home, stellar. And we're going to take a look as our AT&T U-verse rewind. The Giants winning all four of Barry's starts here at AT&T Park. Barry only allowing one run in 20. 26 innings pitched against St. Louis, Colorado, San Diego, and L.A. He is on fire in San Francisco. Now, he has faced the Phillies just one time here at AT&T Park back in 2009, and he defeated them. All right, Barry on the hill today. They need him to be the stopper. Crook and Kipe will be back with first pitch and lineups. But after these messages, we are going to check in with our Comcast Sportsnet Studios for an update. So stay with us.
day baseball here at the corner of third and King the umpires are out the lineup cards being exchanged and this will be the final game of this three game series. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. The admission free boardwalk is open this weekend. It is a chilly 62 degrees here at the yard. Humidity is high. The winds are at 12 miles per hour. And it is going to be a cloudy afternoon here at the ballpark. Did somebody last night on the wrap say sunny and 80? They did. And he was out of his mind. I think that was Dave. Buster Posey with a day off today. Well, that doesn't mean he won't eventually get into the game, but he is not in the starting lineup. Let's take a look at Charlie Manuel's lineup. It'll go like this it'll be Jimmy Rollins in the leadoff spot, and then a familiar face. Kevin Franson will hit second, followed by Michael Young. Utley will be the cleaner pitter. Then it's Delman Young hitting fifth. Ruiz, Mayberry, and Revere will be your six, seven, and eight hitters. And Jonathan Pettibone will pitch in bat ninth. He's a right hander. On the hill today for the Giants will be the left hander, Barry Zito. Zito, in his 13th year at the big league level, when you take your at bats off of Zito, you're going to see a fastball that will go 84, 86 miles per hour. It has a natural cut to it. He'll an eh. Enhance that cut. He'll throw a slider as well, a changeup that's got drift and moving away from a righty and a big curveball. Zito, lifetime against the Phillies, three and three with a 4.60 ERA. And loves pitching in this ballpark. This year, he has been almost perfect, three and oh, with an 0.35 ERA. In 26 innings, he's given up one earned run. And most of his damage has been done during the day. During the day, he has been a perfect. 0 0 0 ERA with the threes and 0 record. I mean, those are tremendous numbers. So to say he's confident is an understatement. Defensively, the Giants are going to set it up this way behind Zito. Starting in the outfield from left to right, it'll be Pagaro, Blanco, and Pitch. You've got good arms on the corner, both with Pagaro and Pence. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side, Scooter and Bell on the right side, and Key Rose will be in the squad putting down the signs. Barry Zito is. Pitching for his fourth win and he's pitching to stop this two game slide against the Phillies. You know, one of the things I'm looking forward to today, Kyle, is the matchup between Barry Zito and Michael Young. And the reason for that is Michael Young has had 85 at bats against Barry Zito. Yeah. And in 85 at bats, he's got one home run. John Mayberry in six at bats has got three. Go figure. So here's Jimmy Rollins to step in. And the first pitch of the ball game is on its way, and it's a called strike. <laughs> oh, and one to Rollins. Rollins hitting 234. And he waves at that breaking ball. And I don't know if he got a piece or not, but nevertheless, it's 0 and 2. Rollins is 1 for 9 in the series. No, I don't think he did. I do not. Big curveball. Throw that one again. Bounce on home plate. And he pulls this one on the ground. Foul. Steve Kowalski is our ball dude down the left field line. Is that Killer Kowalski? And the, our ball dude down the right field line has much more range than Steve. That's Patty Kowalski. Yeah, she has twice as much range. Oh, and two. Bounce to Crawford. And this game gets started with a 6 3 put out. And that'll bring up Kevin Franson. Franson had it at bat in the game last night as a pinch hitter. And he drew a walk. But he's done a nice job here in this Phillies uniform coming off the bench. Today he's playing first base.
Overall hitting 261. He's got four runs batted in. And he takes the first pitch high. One ball and no strikes. Franson has no history against Zito at all. Same spot, 2 0 oh, with Michael Young on deck. Giants lost on Monday, 6 2. The Giants lost last night, 6 2. And this has popped up. Scudero calling. Scudero putting it away, two out. Strike zone today with Dan Bellino is one where he likes the low strike and if you can keep that ball between a catcher's knees you can stretch the strike zone out to both sides you'll get big corners if you sit up on the outside corner and it comes across the plate in the inside corner if it's not between the catcher's knees you won't always get it but he does like that low strike with two outs here's Michael Young Young takes a pitch in tight had a Terrific game against Bumgarner on Monday where he went three for four. One for four last night. Yeah, he has not had a bad at bat in this series. Ninety one times he's faced Barry Zito six walks 20 hits 235 lifetime. Blanco moving out into Triple's alley, and that'll end the inning. It'll be Blanco Scudero Sandoval coming up. Giants. Here's their lineup. It'll be Blanco, Scudero, and Sandoval. Scudero with a seven game hitting streak, and he's swinging the bat. Hunter Pence will be the cleaner pitter, then Belt, Piguero, Crawford. Kiros will hit eighth, and pitching and batting ninth is Barry Zito. On the hill today for the Phillies is Jonathan Pettibone, 6'6, 225 pounder. Phillies always seem to draft tall guys, and he is one of their products. This is his four start. He's off to a great start. 2 0 with a 3 2 4 ERA. And when you face him, you're going to see a, a high 80s, low 90s fastball, depending on the grip. He will sink and cut the fastball. He's got a slider and a, a great changeup. That is his number one pitch, and he'll throw it all the time. He really believes in it. Just 22 years old out of your Belinda, California, down in Southern California. So here's Blanco hitting 273. And Blanco takes the ball. Blanco 0 for 4 last night with a strikeout. He did not play on Monday. Already you can tell that Pettibone likes to get the ball back and then get on the mound and throw another one. There's Scudero. And this is skied into center field for Ben Revere, but it's going to be Mayberry from left field 
for out number one. Let's take a look at the Phillies defensively. Starting the outfield from left to right. You got Mayberry, Revere, and Young. That's your outfield. Rollins and Young on the left side of the infield. Utley and Franzen on the right side. And Ruiz will be in the squad putting down the signs. There's the belt. You got one of those? <laughs> no. I want to get one of those. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. Here's Scooter O. Scooter O last night had a two for four night. Three for eight in the series. And the pitch. And Scooter O taking a strike. Takes one there. It's one ball and one strike. Sandoval to follow. It was Cliff Lee on Monday. It was Kyle Kendrick in the game last night. I call strike two and two. So facing a guy like Kendrick or uh, Pettibon, where you, you really have it. Ever faced him before, and he has a good changeup. How long? How many at bats do you need to see before you're comfortable against him? Well, if you get a nice long first at bat, that'll do it. But take you a couple of bats. Not the guy to ask as far as hitting the changeup. Well, yeah, but we didn't have that many guys that had changeups when we were playing. Now everybody's got a changeup. Get used to it. Hit on the ground into left field, a base hit for Scudero. With the first hit in this game for either team. So here's Sandoval. Sandoval picked up a hit in the game yesterday. He's one for seven in the series. A well, different lineup without Buster Posey, that's for sure. And a strike, and it's 0 and 1. And there is that changeup. Buster Posey, a spectator today. Pretty much straightaway defense. They give Santa the line at, on the third base side. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Well, you know you have a good changeup when you've never faced a guy and you can throw that to him twice in a row. And he swings and misses. So that's a good changeup. Hunter Pence to follow. Sandoval with four home runs, 24 driven in. And that fastball is high, one and two. There's Buster Posey. Sit in the stands today. So you get a day off, you can do that. Scudero at first with one out. Double play ball. Rollins, he'll step on second, and that ends the inning. We will head to inning number two. It's nothing, nothing.
Bay Area is brought to you by Cash Creek Casino Resort. Cash Creek's Great American Cash Giveaway. Thousands of dollars every weekend. Visit CashCreek.com for details. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for baseball everywhere you go. MLB.tv premium subscribers can get at bat premium features for free and watch live out of market games. Text at bat to 31826 or visit SFGiants.com. Here's Utley. Utley takes a strike. He's hitting 276. Hit his seventh home run last night. And he's got 23 RBIs. He's got four hits in the series. And that off speed pitch is up high to even the count at one ball and one strike. Good curveball. That is definitely a pitch he's able to rely on here early on in this game. For a curveball as big as his, I mean, sometimes curveballs that big can be temperamental, but his is pretty much shows up just about every time out there. Utley in the driver's seat, three balls in one strike. He's seven for 17 against Barry Zito lifetime. And he gets Utley to get out in front on that swing. It's a full count. You could have a seven pitch at bat against Zito and not see the same pitch twice in a row. I mean, he's that creative with things that he can do with the ball. Got great touch. Slowly hit. Belt to the bag. And a nice comeback for Zito after falling behind three and one. All right, Amy G's here, Amy. All right, gentlemen, you called it last night when it looked like Angel Pagan might have had a little twinge when he swung the bat in the batter's box, and he certainly did. He had an MRI last night after the game that showed he actually has a mild adductor strain. It is not his hamstring. It's his adductor, which can feel like a hamstring. So now they know what the problem is. He is sitting out today, as you know, but he is available, and they're just handling this with caution. Bruce Bochy saying that the team cannot afford a setback right now. Gentlemen. All right, here's Delman Young. Sound like Amy may have had that injury. Yeah, once or twice. One and oh to Young. And Zito comes in with a strike. Young. Very powerful. Hit the ball a long way. Especially to the opposite field. Here he jumps back from a pitch. 0 for 2 on Monday. Hangs his hands right out over the plate. And this is fouled into the club level down the right field line and then down below. Devil Young's lost some weight since the last time we saw him in the World Series. National League will do that to you. No DH in the National League. Good pitch. Check out the previous pitch on our Exmo. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. You see the circle on the side of the ball. That's the changeup. And he actually, the pressure points are on the middle finger and the ring finger. You take your index finger and thumb off the ball, basically. And, and that's why. You get good arm action and, and no power behind it. Lined out to Piguero. Two down. And with Zito, it's just about anything at any time. A fastball only 44% of the time. He's throwing that cutter a lot. That's a pitch that really he's developed. It, uh, and, he, and he's one of the few guys that throws a cutter and a slider. The slider didn't throw a whole lot. It's more of a, a kill pitch. He'll throw it out of the strike zone wide. And the changeup in the curveball just about 
He throws it just about the same amount, depending on what's working, what feels good that day. Here's Carlos Ruiz. In the dirt, one ball and no strikes. Ruiz hitting 120. Remember, he's just back after being on the suspended list. And he takes a strike. He did not start on Monday. He did last night. And he went one for five. Okay, one thing that happens when you get on that restricted list or suspended list because of a PED violation. Crawford charges. He's got it. They watch you like a hawk when you come back to see if you could be the same player. And so far, he's not been able to do that. Pence will lead things off. is brought to you by Provident Credit Union Super Reward Checking, a checking account that pays you. Here it's nothing, nothing. Home half of the second is Pence will lead things off. Family day at the yard. Why not? Here's Pence. And he takes the first pitch inside. Pence in the game last night. Went 0 for 4, but had a nice night against Cliff Lee on Monday. As Pence went 3 for 3. Two balls and no strikes on the 90 mile an hour fastball. Pence hits a high pop up. Down the left field line, and that'll be in the seats. You watch from the center field camera, you see some of those changeups, and they look like they're right down the middle of the play at the belt. And that's the beautiful thing about a changeup. You have a really good one. You don't have to worry about spotting it on the corners at the knees. You can float it up there at the belt out of the middle of the play, and it's still an effective pitch. This is foul down the right field line. Pence, high drive, left field, Mayberry back, out of here. One nothing Giants, number seven for Hunter Pence. Have a series, Hunter Pence, against your old team. 
We're going to make that our forward right choice. That has to feel good. It's a pretty good pitch to hit. Another hanger. That was a little slider. And in a two strike count, not fooled a bit. Home run number seven for Hunter Pence. Boom. Our forward right choice. Here's Belt, who's out in front, and it's 0 1. I tell you, when he hits them, they're not cheapies. They get up there at least halfway at bleachers. That is a big fly. That guy's having a series, old number 138. He's got a couple balls. That guy can play. Yes, he can. All series long, they've been trying to pound that inside corner against Belt. Well, it's a one for seven series for Belt. Belt fouls this one out of play. So, a guy with a good changeup that you haven't faced, a pretty good idea is to go up there and just think the other way. Yeah, I think you should try to hit him right in the chest. It's a little harsh. Hit it right back up the middle. Three and two. And Pence pulls this one on the ground to Franson. Well, Giants fans, you, you could win a 2012 World Series championship ring through the World Series ring raffle. This is the very same ring given to Giants players and coaches, but this one will be personalized with your name on it. That's right. Your last name goes right on the ring. Proceeds benefit the Giants community fund. So to purchase tickets, go to sfgiants.com slash ring raffle. Here's Piguero who takes a strike. Hitting at 222. Taps this one to third. Young has it, and his throw is just in time. Figueroa retired. Figueroa now two for ten on this young season for him. And here's Crawford. Crawford had a couple of hits last night. And here he bounces this one past Kevin Franson. For a two out single. We we're talking about the little streak he went through where he was like one for 21. It was a weird week. He was hitting the ball hard, but he wasn't getting much to show for it. Now they're starting to fall in. Little slider down and in. They set an outside target. Pettibone misses it. And Crawford drops the head on it, gets himself another knock. He said, This game will test you. He says, But you know, I, I'm not changing anything. I feel good about my at bats. He says, If I stay positive, I think the hits will start falling, and they have. Well, the one thing that can't happen and hasn't happened is when you go through a dry spell at the plate. You cannot take it out in the field, and he hasn't done that. No, he has not. That's the old saying you can't take your bat out to the field. Once that at bat's over, you become a defensive player, and you have to put 100% concentration into being a good defensive player. He rose with a swing and a foul out of play. It's now nothing and two. That used to bother me when I was in the minor leagues. I'd look out in the outfield. The guy who had about a one for 18 was in right field. The batter stance. You think he's thinking about playing defense? <laughs> I see watch Jack Clark do it all the time. Oh, it was crazy. Oh, and two. And that fastball is high. One ball and two strikes. Crawford with a short lead. 
And Kiro strikes out swinging to end the inning. Hunter Pence gives the Giants an early lead. It's home run number seven and it's bye bye baby. And it's one nothing Giants. Principal and also English and religious studies teacher at Sacred Heart Nativity Schools in San Jose. And Bridget is one of five finalists with a chance to win $20,000 for her school. To vote for Bridget, text McGarry to 82653 or vote online. CSNBayArea.com All Star Teacher 2013. The 2013 All Star Teacher is presented by Provident Credit Union. So vote CSNBayArea.com. It's the seventh season at Comcast Sports and All Star Teacher Program has been in effect and it recognizes Bay Area teachers that truly make a difference. So nice going Bridget. Good luck. Here's John Mayberry. And if you're Zito you got to really be careful with this guy. Four for six lifetime, a double, and three home runs. Uh, he's definitely got his number. I'd walk him. That's major ownage or hit him. And not on purpose, though. So. No. There's a foul back, and it's one ball and one strike. Or, or make it 0 and 2. Hey, Barry. In the Bumgarner start went one for four. That was on Monday. One and two. He's a big guy. He's six six. Graduated from Stanford with a degree in political science. His old man had a great career at the big league level. Senior. John Mary Mayberry Senior. You played a lot with against him. I did. Good guy too. Built a little different than he was big, but he was also much thicker than the guy at the plate here. There's a breaking ball in the dirt, three and two. And he was also a left-handed hitter. Oh, two to three, two. Hit out into left center field. Blanco drifting over. One up. She just got him out there on the end of the bat. And that really is a Barry Zito at bat. I mean, he doesn't want to strike you out. He wants to get you out in as few pitches as possible. And all he wants to do 
is take your legs out. Just get you to where you're off balance, reaching just a little bit, put the ball in play, and hit a nice lazy fly ball to center field. That is a perfect Zito out. Here's Ben Revere. He's got a couple of hits in this series. Look it out, that's a an 82 mile an hour fastball and Ben Revere hits the dirt. I mean, this is a big drop right here. This is a big league dusting. I'm not as sure if that was his intention, but in the mind of Ben Revere, he's thinking it was intentional. And when that happens, you always watch how a big league hitter responds. And Zito comes right back inside, but this one's low. Two balls and no strikes. And I think that's a foul ball. It is. Revere opening up and he couldn't get out of the way. Going right back in there again. Opens up and just catches the bat around where the label is. There was a bat the other day in Cleveland. Mark Reynolds. Had gotten hit and he may have it got his shoulder and kind of hit up skimmed and hit him in the neck. I mean it was wicked looking. His next at bat, he hit it almost to the back wall of the bleachers in left field. Said it was one of the greatest moments in his career. <laughs> There's no more macho at bat than that. There's a line drive in the right field. Now the Giants got to keep this from being a triple. Pence gets to it, and Revere comes back with a nice double. So there you have it. What is one of the qualities that you have to have if you're going to be a big league hitter? Well, you can't be afraid. You can't let balls in your head affect you. The same at bat, he comes back, gets a mistake out over the plate, puts a pretty good charge into it, gets himself a two bagger. And when he puts it in play in the outfield, look out because he can flat out pick them up and put them down. Here's Pettibone, who's one for four on the season. And Zito starts him out wide for a ball, one ball and no strikes. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. Day game in Cincinnati today. We're Atlanta beat Cincinnati. Atlanta will jump on a plane and they'll be in San Francisco tonight. Out of play, one and two. At Wrigley Field, the Cubs and Cardinals are playing. Seattle beat Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh today. And San Diego and Miami just underway. All the other games will be played tonight. So it's one and two. The hit for Ben Revere was the first for the Phillies. Out of play again. Pretty good hack. And with the runner in scoring position, you have to pitch this pitcher like he's a third place hitter. Don't ever assume anything about a guy in the batter's box. Like, don't assume he can't hit. Got him. Curveball. First strikeout of the day for Zito. So here's Rollins who bounced out to Crawford to open up the ball game.
How do you share that ball? That's what I want to know. It's tough to do. Can't cut it in half. Not like a popsicle. Well, but just going to have to get another one. That's yeah, all. We're going to have to see if we can figure out a way to do that. One ball and no strikes. Branson is on deck. It's 2 and 0 to Rollins. And Zito throws and this is hit high and straight away into center field. And Blanco puts it away. So Zito pitches through the Revere double. And Zito will lead things off. The Giants have a one run lead and we always like to tell you about a former Giant that was a good Giant and today it's Kevin Franz and now with the Phillies of course but he was drafted by the Giants in 2004 and played with this organization from 06 to 09. He of course went to San Jose State and the best part about Kevin is he's not here anymore but he's a diehard Bay Area sports fan. He was brave enough to take a Sharks territory sign into Citizens Bank Park and guys he's received a lot of flack for it but he's Hands by it. He is a big time Barrier fan and he is not changing it. We love that, guys. All right. Yep. He is a he's a fan. Zito line drive fouled on the left field line. And speaking about the Sharks, congratulations, San Jose Sharks, for the sweep over Vancouver and getting into the next round. No drama. <laughs> I'm into drama and the Sharks, no drama. Well, he did have an overtime game last night. I know, but how much fun is that for Randy and Drew if there's no drama? It's great. We were doing the rap last night, and right in the middle of the rap, we had heard this huge roar. On the ground to second for Utley. And we didn't know what it was. And then we finally figured it out. The Sharks must have won in overtime. Yeah, so Patrick yeah. Marlowe. Congratulations. So here's Blanco. Blanco hit a fly ball the left field. He's 0 for 1. Blanco's got the the colorful looking spikes on today. Well, if you're going to separate yourself from the herd by what you wear, you got to back it up. Takes high, one ball and no strikes. 
And there was a time Mike when we played where. Your shoes. My shoes. And your shoes. Had to almost be identical. Yeah. Now. I mean, you can, unless you're Brian Wilson now you can have. Orange white purple. Ball back two balls in one strike. Adidas, Nikes. The ones that are the most comfortable that I would have had on were the New Balance shoes. They are fantastic. Two balls in one strike. Blanco runs up and fouls it out of play. Got to make a play. You bring your glove, you'd have it. As it is, your buddy gets all the glory. Two and two. That's a pretty good take right there. I mean, that's also the second time around. Veteran right here. Center field. Ben Revere and coming out of nowhere is Mayberry to make the catch. If Mayberry is Ben Revere's size, it's a base hit. But remember, he's 6'6. He's got a lot of stretch and he lays out and uses just about all of it. If I'm looking at Revere, the last thing you see is Mayberry. Nice play. And that's one guy if you're a bit revere you don't want to collide with because you would lose. Yeah. Here's Scudero. Scudero takes high one ball and no strikes. And that's foul right below us. There's a Buster Posey fan. Oh yeah, it likes the panda. He's got the blue glove. That's the Kansas City Royal blue glove. I think he's got everything under control. Out of play. Scudero playing Pepper now with the fans down the right field line. Oh, he's making some friends. And a young man who was right in the front row makes a nice play. That guy? Yeah, the ball came back off the back wall. He got it. Hit high, one bounce, and had him play perfectly. Ooh. Right at the ledge. He was ready. Ninety three mile an hour fastball. That's the best bolt we've seen Pettibone have. For the most part, he's been cruising high eighties. Scudero on the ground to short where Jimmy Rollins has it. And that'll end the inning. So Pettibone with a 1 2 3 third. Zito coming out, and Kevin Franson will lead it off.
pitcher to at CSN Giants, named the last Giants pitcher to start 30 plus games, throw a shutout, and record a save in the same season. It's 1 0 Giants on the Hunter Pence home run. And now Zeta will go after Franson, Young, and Utley. Kevin Franson popped out in the first inning. Here he takes an off speed pitch very high, one ball and no strikes. Breaking ball for a strike to even the count. Talking to Kevin Franzen yesterday about this matchup, he and Barry Zito are very close friends. He said it's going to be weird hitting against Zito because I've done it before. He says, but I, it's just weird playing against a good friend. It's this one to deep left field to Garrell looking up, and Franzen has hit it out, and this game is tied. Apparently, it wasn't that weird. Yeah, he didn't even let you finish your point. Oh, one swing of the bat, he ended the story. Looked like a little changeup hung out over the middle of the plate, right at the belt. May have been a cutter, but he was not fooled. So for Franzen, home run number one of the year. And to do it against his former team, it's got to feel pretty good. And here's Michael Young. For Zito. That's the third home run that he's allowed this year. Young takes a strike on the outside corner. Young hit a fly ball to center field. Back in the first inning, it's a 1 1 ball game. Utley watching from the on deck circle. And it's three and one. Oh, yeah. You can hear all the friends and neighbors, friends, family members down in San Jose. They got a pretty good cheer going on right now for their local hero. I liked it better when he was hitting them out for the Giants. This is lined at Piguero who puts it away. So if you're Zito, you go right back to work and get the next guy. The home run is a distant memory. Here's Utley. Utley bounced out to Belt to lead off the second inning. We're in the fourth. That was a Sharks fan. Actually, it's Randy Hahn. <laughs> Randy coming out. Is that in the upper deck? Yeah, I thought maybe Randy could maybe get a little better seat than that. There's a breaking ball for a strike. Well, he's psyched. That's all I can tell you. I know he's going incognito. He'd be. People knew that that was Randy. He'd be mobbed. Yeah, there's no upper deck here. That's the view level, and it does have a good view. Popped up. Sandoval shading his eyes. This could be tricky. And he hangs in there and puts it away. I saw Drew Remenda. He's two rows behind the Giants dugout. So Drew's two, two rows behind the Giants dugout. And Randy's in the upper tank. He's in the view. Yeah. Well, the color analyst, they rate a little higher. There's a strike to Delman Young. If you don't have glasses, use your gloves. Shade your eyes. It's an old trick. Very effective. And Pablo's pretty good on pop-ups. When they go his way, we're all confident. No. 
And that off speed pitch is high. Two balls and one strike. Zito with 57 pitches. Ooh, very close. Three and one. Little pop up that belt will drift back, and that'll end the inning. Sandoval, Pence, and Belt coming up. Game tied. Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. All right, here's our AT&T trivia question and answer. Name the last Giants pitcher to start 30 games and throw a shutout and record a save in the same season. My partner did it in 1984. 84 season. Shut out the Braves on July 27th. I remember the save in Philadelphia. Danny Ozark was the manager. Here's Sandoval who fouls it out of play. I had pitched the day before, five and two thirds innings. It was one of those times where the bullpen was just torched. So you know how bad Danny Ozark wanted to beat the Phils because he had been. The manager there for a long time. Absolutely. And when Frank Robinson was let go, Danny took over the team. So it was one of those games where they were going through bullpen guys left and right. He looks at me about the sixth inning. He goes, "I may have to use you tonight. You can get it out. I won't. I won't do it unless I absolutely have to." Sure. So I go down the bullpen. Anyway, here we go. We get to two outs in the ninth inning, and that was it. He goes to the right hander in the bullpen. I come in the ball game. And I'm thinking, I took a loss yesterday. I could take another one today. Uh -huh. This is not good. Giants had a one run lead. And uh, Sixto Lozano came up. I threw three sliders in a row, hit a ground ball to Johnny the Master. We win the game. What a problem. You Stick didn't know it. getting a save was so easy, yeah, did you? Pretty fun. Sandoval on the 3 1 pitch pops this one up and out of play. All right, we have a winner. Foul ball sweepstakes. See, and you can't tell me chicks don't dig the foul balls. Serious business. <laughs> She's having a ball. Sandoval pops another one back and out of play. He can almost unhinge his upper body and lean out and stay and keep those hands back to hit a change up where his lower body is gone but his those hands stay back he can still hurt you.
And Sandoval takes the walk. Well, Hunter Pence, two home runs in the series, and check out the oddity. The same guy gets both balls. Come on. And I see that guy walk to the ballpark. And he was psyched. He gave the first one to his daughter. Yeah, you know what? He, he and Pence have got something going. Yeah, this is, let's hope he hits him another one. And this time Hunter Pence gets jammed and it's no balls in one strike. So Sandoval takes the first walk issued by Pettibone. Little flare and Utley is going to track it down. Well Saturday this Saturday is the annual Junior Giants glove drive presented by Bank of America over 9000 kids in the program do not have a glove so they can't even play catch so bring a new glove or donate 10 bucks when you're at the game on Saturday and you receive a World Series pinner Buster Posey MVP pin and uh, Mike found a glove he's going to donate I found one sitting around in the garage and remember bring it to the ballpark on Saturday. Or you can donate 10 bucks. The uh, the pins are pretty cool. His belt takes a ball. You get a a World Series 2012 World Championship pin, or a Buster Posey National League MVP pin. So if you like to collect pins, here's a good way to do it. For me, I couldn't decide which pin, so I threw in 20. Did you get both pins? Yep. Nice going. And oh, by the way, if you're not going to be around the ballpark for a while, just go to jrgiants.org. His belt takes low, 3 0. And uh, you can donate online, jrgiants.org. So it's 3 0 to belt. And belt takes ball four, and I think he thought that that was a strike. So Jonathan Pettibone right now has created an opportunity for the Giants for absolutely free. So here's Pagaro. Pagaro bounced out. In the second inning, Sandoval at second, Belt at first. Utley, they'll get nobody there, and now Belt is out at second base. Had Belt continued to go hard, he probably would have been safe. And now Belt's going to go back just to wait. That's the best thing to do. Find out what's going on. Well, Belt made a good play to stop. He backed up and avoided being touched by Utley. Now, that's a smart play. Right here, that's a good play. But now he's got to hustle into that bag because he was not called out. He avoids being tagged. He assumes because he avoided the tag that he went out of the baseline and that he was out. But that's you got to keep going. So they don't get the back in because of the speedy Pagaro. But the Phillies do catch a break because Belt did not accelerate to get to that bag. And now he's being told about that by the skipper. Yeah, you see what he's saying is you can't assume that the umpire is going to call you out of the baseline. So now it's going to take a hit or a mistake by the Phillies. Is Crawford will step up. And he sort of starts watching. I, I truly believe he thought he was out because he avoided it. In his mind, he left the base pad. And that's how you learn. You make mistakes.
Well Crawford can pick everybody up. You got a base hit in the second inning past Franson. You know, the baseball rule book is such that I, I don't think there's a player in the big leagues that knows every rule in the rule book. And there's a lot of little obscure rules that you only learn about them when they happen to you or a teammate or an opponent. And there's a lot of of rules that are up to to umpire interpretation. And that's the great gray area of the baseball rule book. Crawford fouls this one out of play on the first pitch from Pettibone and it's no balls in one strike. Listen to John and Dave. A couple of gamer babes. Got the colors on. Brought great attitudes. Here's the L1 and Crawford takes outside one ball and one strike. One of our really terrific camera people, Marty Cohen, that's his mom, is on the left listening to John and Dave. Into right center field. Is it going to hang up for Ben Revere? You bet it is, and that'll end the inning. No runs, two walks, two left, through four. It's a 1 1 ball game. Anytime you think you have the game conquered, the game will turn around and punch you right in the nose. Isn't that the truth? And it is a Hall of Fame career. I was very fortunate to have played one year with him in Philadelphia, 1982. Great guy, and what a tremendous talent. Mike Schmidt. Michael Jack Schmidt. I tell people all the time. Well, not all the time, but people that really care to listen. Mike Schmidt and I played in Springfield, Illinois, on the same collegiate league team in the summertime. You know, you, they get you a job, and it was called the Central Illinois Collegiate League. As Ruiz hooks this one, foul. Yep, I bounced him off the third. He played short, and I played third. Is that right? Yep. You know why? Because he was a shortstop there. He was a shortstop in college. At Ohio University. Amazing. This is skied out to right field. Hunter Pence. One out. So what was your summer job? I worked in a hospital. 
Uh, touch up paint. You are the touch up paint guy? Yep. It was great. Any patients that looked a little pale, I touched them up. <laughs> That's good. Here's John Mayberry. And the year before, actually, you know, the next year when I was in Furia, I worked in the bank mail room. I mail letters that still haven't gotten there. Uh, I figured you'd be a natural for that job. One ball and no strikes. Mayberry hit a fly ball to center field. Only one make that two hits in the game for the Phillies. A double by Revere and a home run by Franson. Giants have three hits. Pence is the home run for the Giants. This is pulled on the ground foul. Nice play by Killer Kowalski. Steve Kowalski. If he had made plays like that at fantasy camp, yeah, he might have been invited back. A patty, she can go back anytime she wants. Killer, forget it. Well, Killer offered to pay the fee, and Bill Lasky said, no, we're good. We're good. We're good. You can stay home. Well, his company, TimeWorks, built the clock out in center field. Good guy, Steve Kowalski. Very good guy. Whole family of Giants fans. Behind second, it's Scudero. Well, Zito's been able to take the sting out of Mayberry's back. And here's Ben Revere. Ben Revere doubled down the right field line in the third inning. And here he takes wide 1 and 0. Little pop up down the left field line. Piguero racing in. And he will put it away to end the inning. So a nice inning for Zito. He's retired six straight since the home run. Heroes will lead things off. One common goal, the official Giants commitment to book about the 2012 championship season is out. The forward written by Buster Posey, afterward written by Matt Kane, and exclusive photos tell the entire story of a team that refused to give up.
relive this great time in Giants history for only 40 bucks. You can visit your local Giants dugout store to get your copy of One Common Goal, or you can go to sfgiants.com and click on the fan tab to order. It is absolutely stunning, the pictures that you will see. That's one of my favorites right there. I mean, they're just they're great memories, and it takes you back. One Common Goal. Here's Guillermo Quiroz. Fouls this one out of play. Struck out in the second. And uh, sitting on the airplane in St. Louis. No, actually in Cincinnati. Giants did not know if they were going to fly home to play the Cardinals or fly to Washington, D.C. to play the Nationals. And that was the team watching the, the ninth inning, I believe, of the game between the Nationals and the Cardinals. And they found out that it was the Cardinals and they let out a cheer because it meant that they were coming home. And come home they did. Well the, the reason there was. So much excitement is. The Nationals I believe had a. I know they had a one run lead maybe a two run lead late. And it looked like it was pretty automatic the Giants were going to head to Washington D.C. 3 1 pitch to key rows. And that's the get the bat. It's three and two. Umpires love that. Old catchers, they're not that happy with it though. That's a pitcher strike. That's a 50 50 pitch. 50 time, 50% of the time you get it, 50% of the time the hitter gets it. Just hope you don't get it on a 3 2 count. On the ground is short for Rollins. All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, Dwayne, we have a new bull shooting available for fans at CSNBerry.com. I sat down and visited with Chad Godin. We talk about what he misses from his hometown back in the state of Louisiana, and he also shares who in the Giants lineup he would not want to face. He takes a long time to think about that. It's a tough question. Bull shooting, CSNBerry.com. All right, Amy, here's Zito. There's a strike to Zito. He bounced out to short or to a second. By the way, in that game we were talking about, the Nationals had a two run lead and they were one strike away from moving on, or the Giants were one strike away from flying to Washington, D.C. Well, we all thought we were going to see that plane head east and head out into Washington, D.C. So when the Cardinals pulled it out, the Giants were going to be able to come back home and have home field advantage. Everybody's pretty excited. Yeah, about it. If I remember right, the plane was a little short on fuel too. Thinking that we were going to Washington D.C. Oh, two pitch to Zito. Zito, it's a high fly ball into left center field. Two outs. Puts it in play. So here's Blanco. Blanco has flied out twice to left. Sharks guy. Good time to be a Sharks fan. No drama though. Well, there wasn't in the first round. Now the Warriors. Tonight we're talking drama now. Oh yeah. See. Blanco drives one to right. This is going to be off the bricks. It turns right to Young. And Blanco has to put on the brakes. He got out of the blocks well too. I mean, he, not like he was standing there watching it in the, in the batter's box. This ball hit so hard, and Young plays the carom like he plays here every day. Lays back, one hopper perfect. And look at this throw. If he goes, he's out. So a nice two-out swing of the bat by Gilbert Blanco. He has to settle for a single. Well, let's see if Blanco can get into scoring position here. 
This is go time. Two outs, your leadoff hitter. This is when you are supposed to steal. And this is one of the reasons why you're in the lineup. You've got the speed to steal a bag. Scudero is going to give you a chance at least once or twice as he takes a strike. Scudero can't wait any longer. That frustrates you hit in the two spot. You take two strikes and you're an 0-2 hole because you're trying to give him a shot, shot to steal. Blanco goes and the throw is not in time. Well, it's kind of part of the deal. If the guy doesn't go, yeah, that's going to tick you off a little bit. Well, he picked a pretty good pitch to go. I mean, it, Ruiz looked like he got a little bit off balance because of the high fastball. Just a good jump. And Pettibone is not the fastest out of the stretch. 6'6, six, six, you can understand why. He got a lot of body to get going. But these are the at bats where if you're pitching, you really hate to be facing a contact guy like Scudero. Because you know he's going to put the ball in play. And in a 1 1 ball game, and a guy in score position, that's not always a good mix. Scooter all into center field. This could fall, and it's going to fall. And the Giants take the lead on a bloop. And that's the beauty of a guy that doesn't fear a two strike count who is going to put the ball in play. Doesn't hit it very hard right off the end of the bat. A little pop up out in no man's land. And when it's all said and done, this is a thing of beauty. An easy score for Blanco. And it looked like Revere did not get a good jump. Now he broke back a little bit. So there's. A little small ball. And here's Sandoval. Sandoval is going to dump it into right field. And that's a fair ball. And Scudero is being held up. So three. Singles in a row, all of them a little weird. Well, the one single that Bucko had, he, well, most instances is going to be at least a double, maybe more. But the hit by Scudero and now this doink by Sandoval, things of beauty. Just out there, no man's land, and that's going to bring out Rich Duby, the pitching coach for the Phillies, try and calm his young right hander down. Well, it's going to be Pence. Pence is homered and he's popped out. He hit a long home run in the second inning. Yeah, this was a big fly. This is a big man's home run. And he has been unstoppable, unstoppable in this series against the Phillies. So here's Pence batting for the third time. And the first pitch misses one ball and no strikes. I don't think Pettibone thought it missed. I'll feel straight away. This is again, and it's 2 0. Trying to crowd him down and in. It's always interesting to see how a former team of a guy pitches him when they face him. Whatever philosophy they've had in pitching Hunter Pence in this series has not worked. And he comes back with a strike. 
So Blanco with two outs. A single a stolen base and he scores on Scudero's hit. Here it's two and one to Pence. Two perfect pitches a 2 0 corner on the inside and then a 2 1 corner on the outside. Well, I think Pence might disagree with you on that one. Well, I agree with you. That is a pitcher strike, no question. I mean, if you're hitting and you're getting corner calls on both sides of the play, that does upset you a bit. Slowly hit to Franson, and this is going to end the inning. Giants are on the board. They take the lead. We'll head to the sixth. Twentieth to the twenty-second, and you can watch one of the most exciting young players in the entire game. That's twenty-year-old All-Star Bryce Harper. So Monday, May twentieth, and Tuesday the twenty-first, they're both seven-fifteen starts. And then the Wednesday, May twenty-second game is a twelve-forty-five midweek day game. So get your tickets. Go to sfgiants.com and come out and take it to this Nationals team. They are very, very good. It'll be an excellent series. Nationals. Here's Pettibone facing Zito, sixth inning. And a strike to Pettibone. 2 1 ball game. And it pitches high to Jonathan Pettibone, who struck out in the third. That's Zito's only strikeout. And he shoots this one out of play. It's one and two. Do we have a winner in the foul ball sweepstakes? Oh, yeah. I found a good home. I think we do. Tap slowly. Foul. The Phillies are headed to. Phoenix where they will take on the Arizona Diamondbacks probably figured that one out got him see you. happy birthday to Devin Fox Devo, who senior director of news operations here at Comcast Sportsnet and very shy, Devin. Your husband Justin, to her right. The guy on her left has no idea what royalty that he's sitting next to. 
Oh, that's Chris Oliver. Well, Chris knows. He's the news director. So, uh, Evo, way to go. Happy birthday. Indeed. You want something done? Ask her. Yeah. Here's Dave Bernstein, executive producer of the news, waving. So all the heavyweights from Comcast so Sportsnet. If you're sitting next to the birthday girl, you get a mention. <laughs> so what it's supposed to be. Oh, we just got a text from Ted Griggs. Yeah. Ted Griggs is watching. He wishes a happy birthday to Devo. Two and one to Jimmy Rollins. Swing and a miss. Two and two. This is drilled into left center field and deep and off the wall. Figueroa gets to it quickly and Rollins has got a double. Not fooled on that breaking ball. He went down and dug it out. Waited. Had a little hang time right there about mid thigh. Watch where the ball drops in. That is wheelhouse. You hang one like that, a guy tees off. You're lucky if it stays in the yard. Yeah, that made a pretty good thud. And it hit the pads out in left field. So here's Franson who's popped out and homered. And now a pickoff attempt and Rollins sliding back into second. All the hits of this game off of Zito, all three have been for extra bases. Work to do for Zito against Franson. So the Giants have a little bit of an idea that Jimmy Rollins may be trying to sneak into third. And they're going to try all they can to keep that from happening. Franson pops this one down the right field line and out of play. This was the home run. His first of the year for Kevin Francis. Looked like a little cutter or maybe a changeup. Comes right back in the strike zone and fans are not fooled by the speed at all. And that has been the Phillies offense so far today. Owen oh two. This is an opportunity for a shutdown inning. I mean, the Giants scored in the bottom of the fifth, so the next half inning, if you can get a zero up there, that's a shutdown inning. And he's done very well. The National League average 74%. He's 10 for 11 in those opportunities. Rollins goes. They got a shot, and he is out at third. And credit the Giants for keeping him close at second to allow Key Rose to throw him out. And this is a huge play. Watch the unload. Very quick slide step. Better than average release from Zito's standpoint. And Kiora's with Kiro's with a strike right to Santa Ball. Plenty of time to slap the tag. And that is huge. I don't know. I mean, Rollins did not have a good lead at all. I don't think he ever touched the bag. So it's two and two to Franson. Crawford at short will throw out Franson and that'll end the inning. Bell, Figueroa, Crawford coming up.
Diamondbacks history, May 8, 2002. That's with Kirk Rita, the winningest left handed pitcher in San Francisco Giants history, he picked up his 100th major league win by limiting Mets to two runs on five hits in the Giants' 8 2 victory at Shea Stadium. A couple of hits for Woody that day. See the, the 97 right past Mo Vaughn? Oh, he just blew him away. Did you say 97 or 77? No, no, 97. Oh. As the years separate from that actual date, Woody throws harder and harder. <laughs> well, I'll say this about Woody. Definitely one of the most competitive people I've ever met in my life. He could pitch. Yes, he could. Belt is 0 for 1 with a walk. Here he swings and misses. One ball and one strike. Figuero and then Crawford. Got a bone with ninety three pitches. And he keeps throwing belt in the same spot almost every time. Down and in, down, in, in, up, in at the belt, in, in, and more in. And away, two and two. If they've gone away, they've gone away off the plate bad. Yeah, the, the away is just to set up the end. In soft away. So here's the payoff to Belt. And Belt's going to take the walk on a pitch down and in. But this time you saw it early and laid off. So good at bat. Two walks on the day for Belt. Charlie Manuel not like it lead off walks. So here's Piguero. Piguero is hit the ball on the ground twice. And the first pitch is. A belt high strike and it's 0 and 1. Back and now it's nothing in two. One thing that Piguero can do is use the whole field. We've seen him have a lot of nice at bats during springtime to right field. And because of that, the Phillies respect it. They're playing him straight up. They are not overplaying it to one side of the field. When Figueroa was really swinging the bat well in spring training, a lot of balls into that gap in right center field. Out of play. Now well, the giraffe and the panda enjoy the view out there on the cove. One and two. Breaks his bat, slow roll to third. Young has it. Young will throw to first, and they just get Piguero, so it's almost as good as a bunt. And that'll bring up Crawford. The only reason it's almost as good as a bunt is you're charged with a bat if you're the hitter. <laughs> yeah. A bunt hits a 
You're not charged with it at bat. Mm. And you lose your gamer. It just blew up in your hand. Uh, and really, the last thing you want to hear when you get into the dugout after that is, hey, way to get him over. What's that what he's trying to do? Hey. Nevertheless, Giants have a man in score position. Here's Crawford. Crawford's hit the ball hard twice. Well, I think right now he's going to chew on him a little bit because his location was way away from the intent. And they missed a location with a uh, when they set up outside in Brandon Crawford's first at bat. They came across the plate down and in. And that's when he got his base hit to the right side. See the target away and watch where the ball goes. This goes on the other side of the plate. And, and it may have been a strike. If he sets up there, you're right. He may get it. Ninety mile an hour fastball from Pettibone, and that's a hundred and four pitches right now. He's throwing the ball very well this afternoon. Belt with his lead at second. Look out. Two balls and a strike. Almost grazed his uniform. I mean, that's a pretty extreme target there on the inside corner. He's looking for something to get in on his hands with. He winds up almost drilling him. There is activity in the Philly bullpen. You saw it. It's Philippe Amont and Jeremy Horst, the left hander. Well, Amont looks like he's about seven foot three from here. I tell you, Phillies, uh, they like tall pitchers. They always have. On the ground to Franson. Belt will move over to third. Well, check out Chronicle Live presented by Farmers today at 5 o'clock right here on Comcast Sports at Bay Area. Jim Cozumore hosts Chronicle Live, the Bay Area's hottest ticket sports talk. And tonight, he'll be talking to Richmond, Rich, Mitch, Richmond, the six time All Star, Ray Ratto, always entertaining, and Mark Purdy, the San, San Jose Mercury News. So, great conversation. Check it out. Chronicle Live presented by Farmers today at 5 p.m. So, Zito is going to be asked to knock in a run. Six seven. That's my guess. He is Amon six seven two sixty. He is a big fella. On your left. When you add the mound, he's a little taller. Well, Jeremy Horst is six three, and he looks like he's <laughs> a kid. This might be a mistake because of. Zito going three for 11 this year. Does have an RBI. And if you're Rollins, Young, or Mayberry, you better be heads up. Zito has put the ball in play twice, and he's 0 for 2. On the ground and the base hit the right field. Zito comes through, belt scores, it's three to one. He puts the ball in play. It's very difficult to analyze his swing. It's his swing, his approach, and his only. They go middle in and just put the barrel head on the ball, let the pitcher supply the power, and this is a huge swing of the bat and that's going to be the last pitch that Pettibone throws. And it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and tune up. 
your oil change tune up and smog experts. We'll be back. Sportsnet Bay Area. 3 1 Giants were in the sixth inning. Jerry Zito's second RBI of the year, a two out single. And here's the new pitcher. On the hill for the Phillies will be Jeremy Horace, the left hander. Horace, you get a fastball right around 90, slider and a changeup. And he likes his changeup. 19 hits at 13 and two thirds, 23. Hitters have gotten on base at 13 and two thirds, and that explains the ERA of 6.59. So he is off to a slow start. And so far, two pitches, two balls. Phillies have something that I, I have never seen. A, Unless it's in the month of September when the call ups come up. They have four left handers in their bullpen. Well, we're about to see a right hander if he doesn't throw another strike. It's 3 0 oh to Blanco. And that's ball four. Charlie, what are you going to do? Well, he's got aim off the sinker ball ready to go. He's going to leave Morris out there for Scudero. One ball and no strikes. First time that Scudero has ever faced Horst. Heroes is at third. Zito at second. Blanco at first. Two and zero. Oh. A very peculiar decision from Charlie Manuel. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering why you even have the red hander up. Well, Amon has faced Scudero twice. He's 0 for 2. I mean, the only reason you, you think is leave him in there because if he doesn't get Scudero, maybe he wants Sandoval to hit from the from the right side, not the left side. But he's rolling the dice right here. Out of play, it's two and two. So Horse has done a nice job of coming back after falling behind two and zero. Oh. 
These are the moments that make you lose your hair and scratch your head. Scudero is going to lift one out to right field for Young. And that'll end the inning. Horse does a nice job of coming back. We'll head to the seventh. 3 1 Giants. Here's our Toyota game summary brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Giants with a three to one lead. Pettibone threw the ball extremely well. Zito is allowed one and run. The home run to Kevin Franson. Hunter Pence, see what he's done in the series with a couple of home runs. And Marco Scudero is hot. He's got a couple of singles today and an RBI. All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, we have a very special guest here, Scott Gomez. He's a center for the San Jose Sharks. A much deserved day off for you after you guys just swept the Canucks. The first sweep for the Sharks in playoff history. How you feeling? Yeah, it feels good. You know, uh, we had a chance to finish them off, and we, we did that. And, uh, you know, get, get a couple of days rest. We got an older team, and so I uh, hey, get to come watch baseball with my dad, and it um, works out great. You do get a nice rest here, which you guys aren't used to, but how do you decide to spend your day at a ball game? We love that. Well, my dad's here, and uh, so huge baseball fans, uh, you know, we're Padre fans, but love the Giants too. So came, uh, you know, wanted to see the ballpark, that, and then, um, you know, we'll go to the Rolling Stones tonight. So my dad came at the right time. Big day, big day. And you're a two-time Stanley Cup winner yourself, so how do you kind of lend your experience to this team, and, and how do you guys stay sharp with this break? I'm sure the coaches will have a game plan. I mean, uh, probably take a couple of days off here and then go at it. I mean, that's that's what the coaches are for. But, uh, you know, I think anything in playoffs, um, you know, learn from some great guys. been fortunate to be on some winning teams, and uh, it's just the information that you, you pass on. I mean, it's not uh, it's not coming from me. It's coming from the the Hall of Famers that I learned from and um, hey we got a good club we got a great group of guys and um, you know, we're going to make a good run at it. Scott Gomez thanks for letting us no. bug you on your day off we appreciate it and the best of luck to you in the next round. Thank you. Wayne. All right Amy think more drama. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think the Sharks are very happy with what happened and, and they provided just enough drama in that suite. <laughs> Okay. See, you, you, you sweep in the first round, you get great seats. Yeah, Randy clearly didn't. There's Joe Fonzie. Here's Utley, and a strike to Utley after Young had bounced out. He was cruising along at 88 pitches. Is Joe here work or pleasure? Well, Joe kind of does both. <laughs> we 
have known Joe a long time, and he is a good, good guy. There's the funds. The original funds? That's the real funds right there. Swing and a miss, nothing in two. Arthur Fonzarelli. Arthur Fonzarelli. That was, that was another Wisconsin based sitcom. Yeah. How did that how did that happen? 0 2 pitch to Utley. And Utley got a piece. He was running like crazy out of the box. It's stays at 0 and 2. Uh, that's the only way he ever leaves the box unless he hits it out of the ballpark. He busts his tail on every play. That's one of the reasons we have liked this guy since he first got to the big leagues and he's maintained that his entire career. Utley with a swing and a miss. Third strikeout now for Zito. Nice slider. Uh, they really had the hot hand coming into this game. It's had a nice series, but Zito really has calmed him down. 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Here's Delman Young. Young takes wide, one ball and no strikes. Swing and a miss. And now it's one ball and one strike. One oh change up and he got young to go out of the strike zone and chase at. When you go back and throw the same thing in or you can elevate above the hands of the fastball with a sight line change. One and two. Another change up backed it up. Zeno's got a good enough change to throw three in a row. Back foot slider, he can bounce a curveball, elevated fastball. And 85, that's just about his best bolt velocity wise today with the fastball. 95 pitches on the day. Steve Kowalski digging it out. It's two and two to Delman Young. And a souvenir headed to the club level. Mention the. Phillies are going to Arizona. That's a four game series. Braves are coming here for a four game series. Slowly hit the Sandoval who's charging. He will throw on the run and Young is retired and Zito with a great inning here in the seventh and he should get a nice round of applause as he departs. Sandoval.
Parker had a good ball game. It's a 3 1 lead, but it's time for a change. Think speedy. Oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. Philippe Amants, the new pitcher for Philadelphia. When you take your at bats off this guy, he is going to throw you some big time heavy sink. Got a curveball and a split to go with it, but for the most part, you're going to see a lot of sink. 11 strikeouts. 18 base runners have gotten on, and he can get a little wild. This guy's a pretty spooky at bat. We talked about how big he is. 6'7, 260. He's a big, strong fella. So here's Sandoval. And Sandoval on the first pitch bounces this one to Francis. One out. So is this like Scott Munter like? Scott Munter like. About the same size. Amon, 24 years old, out of Quebec, Canada. Broke in last year. There was a a, a year, like a, th a three month period, where Scott Munter pitched every day. He had nasty and, and he pitched well. Here's Pence. That at 95 and it's one ball and no strikes. Pence homered in the second. Since then he's popped out and he's bounced out. We are in the bottom of the seventh. And that's at the knees for a strike or just below it a shade. There's not an organization on the planet that doesn't want a, a sinker ball that can go mid 90s with velocity. Because that is a that is a ground ball throwing machine. And there's the breaking ball. Well, they can do multiple things. They can give you a couple of innings. They can get one. Two quick outs on one pitch. Yeah, they're they're great to bring into an existing inning when you need that ground ball. You're right. There are also guys that don't throw a lot of pitches. If they can throw it in the strike zone. If you got a sinker ball that has good command, that is a true commodity. Especially if he's got this type of velocity. Yeah, you can pitch him in small ballparks where the wind's blowing out. You're not going to give up a whole lot of home runs. Plus, he's entertaining. Yeah. You watch sinker ballers throw, and guys are hitting balls off their feet. They said about every time he goes out there. You know, if you're the opposition, that's that's entertainment. The three-one to Pence. Pence dribbles this one foul. Hustled all the way down the line. Full count now to Hunter Pence. Okay, Mikey. Just a bit outside. Playing that one. How about that? A 3 2 curveball. So he was he saving it? <laughs> it's great. Look at down the Phillies dugout when he throws his pitch. Charlie's Charlie Manuel's head <laughs> just dropped straight, straight down. Well, he, he tried to find the pitching coach. Rich Doobie is like, seriously? Yeah, that'll definitely. Make you scratch your head and lose your hair. Here's Belt. Belt has walked twice. So he's bounced out. I guess he's charged. There's the reaction. <laughs> uh, the animated Mr. Man. See, that's a, a manager old hitting coach reaction. Yep. Pence goes. 
And he had it stolen as this is dribbled foul. Now the one thing bad about being 6 7 is it takes a little longer to get that big body unwound. And you're never going to see a guy too quick out of the stretch. It's 6 7. 260. It is not. And Hunter Pence taking advantage of it. Had a great jump. And with the sinker ball, you're going to probably see him go again. What we've known and come to understand about Bruce Bochy is that when you have a sinker ball out there, man at first base, he will start that runner to stay out of the double play. Swing and a miss. Nothing in two. Bugarel on deck. Pence leaning. And Belt gone swinging. He got a piece. Two outs. Is that that same curveball? Yeah, I mean, it's a good curveball. But I think it's really effective when you can just try and bounce this thing on. Home plate, especially to a lefty. That's a perfect pitch. So here's Piguero. Pence goes, and the throw is not in time. He is now six for six. In the stolen base department. Now the one thing that has always been applauded in this game is the combination of power and speed. And he really has shown both those skills in today's game a home run and now a stolen base on a walk. And get out of second base, a chance to visit with some old teammates. Jimmy Rollins comes over to say, hey. Owen one to Figueroa. Well, one of the best at bats we've seen Figueroa take was that was off of Ronald Belisario, who is quite nasty. On the ground, Utley from the outfield grass. Better hurry, and they got him. And that'll end the inning. It remains three Watson Giants.
Brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. It's a 3-1 to one lead through seven innings. Giants on top. Duck boats coming on in. Were there any of those in the parade? No. No, we need a few duck boats in there. You know yeah. what? Next year maybe, huh? <laughs> yeah. Are we getting a little cocky? Ah, uh, well, hey. All in good fun. I was actually talking about the uh, pumpkin festival. Oh. There you go. In Half Moon Bay. We got a chance to ride in that parade. That was fun. Kind of like parades around here. They throw good ones. Ruiz takes the pitch outside. It's two and zero. Oh. And he's going to lead off the eighth inning with a base hit to left field on pitch number 101. All right, let's check in with Amy G. All right, gentlemen, immediately following today's game right here at AT&T Park, people can come down and watch a high school championship game. It's George Washington High taking on Lowell High, the former high school of Giants President Larry Bear. He might be staying and watching. They're actually here watching out behind right field, anxiously seeing how it's done by the big fellas, and it's free. So if you're home watching and you want to take a trip down here to the park, come on over, walk in, and watch some great baseball and see some future stars. Dwayne? All right, Amy. There they are. They're they're at the gate. Is Santiago Casilla is loose and ready to go? As Guillermo Quiroz gave Casilla a few more opportunities to get loose. Now Jeremy Affel trotting down to the bullpen. Mayberry is flied out and popped out, and now Bruce Bochy is coming out. And they stalled as long as they could. Guillermo Quiroz took about the slowest walk I've ever seen a catcher take, both to the mound and then back to home plate. Well, as you'd expect, I mean, Zito didn't want to come out. But I'm sure the history that Mayberry has against Zito has something to do with it. Listen to this great ovation for Zito. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. You oil change tune up and smog experts. When the very, very talented Atlanta Braves will be in town, and that'll be game one of a four game series. Pre-game live will start at 6:30, and then we will join you right at the top of the hour at 7 for the ball game. And you can see it right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. And Ryan Vogelsong will take the hill for the Gigantes. A three to one ball game here in the eighth is Santiago Casilla steps on top of the mound. Santiago Casilla coming in now for Bruce Bochy. He inherits a runner on first, no out situation, trying to protect a two run lead for Barry Zito. And he is not going to face John Mayberry. It's going to be 
Ryan Howard, the big fella. And you see the numbers for Casilla. He has had an outstanding start to this 2013 year. So it's Howard. Hmm. Who hit a long home run last night. The overshift is on for Howard. This was the home run that Mike's talking about. Off of Jose Mijares, who pitched well last night, only one mistake, and this was it. And when it left the crack of the bat, it was a loud, resounding sound. Well, it went through three layers of fog before it came back down. Ruiz at first base, 1 0 to Howard. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. A change up. Out of way out front. A great day for Barry Zito. Now he turns into a cheerleader. One and two. Backed it up. Field stopped throwing, so he's good to go. I mean, he gets ready in a hurry. One and two to Howard. Got him. Good, hard curveball. He wow. saved it for the two strike count. Brought that thing down and in. And Ryan Howard overmatched. So he kind of softballed him. A couple of change ups. And in the end, he finishes him off with a big over the top curveball. <laughs> nice pitch. So here's Ben Revere, a double and a pop up to left. Sandoval is down the line at third, and it's down low to Revere. There you see Sandoval come in from third base to protect the bunt. You have to do that with Revere, and he's got tremendous speed. Hard to double up. And he comes back with a strike to even the count. We got some happy folks here. It's a happy place. Not a lot of sunshine today, but you wouldn't know it by how much fun the crowd is having. There's another sellout over 41,000. Two balls and a strike. Get on the ground, belt to Crawford, and nobody can get the first. And you see, it was late getting there, but it wouldn't have mattered. He's not going to beat Revere to first base. That you got to get an out. And maybe he didn't get to first because he hurt something. Big time concern. Let's take a look and see what it was. Yeah, he's coming out. He may have twisted the, the left ankle. He's running pretty good right there. It doesn't look like he's favoring anything. So Jeremy Affeld is going to come in as Casilla. Leaves the ball game. It's 3 1 Giants.
game live highlights reaction and analysis and it's all coming up right after the game. We're in the eighth inning it's a three one lead for the Giants. The pitcher now for Bruce Boach is going to be the veteran Jeremy Affelt. Tenth time that he has come in. Remember, he spent two weeks on the disabled list. Actually, a little bit longer than that. No record yet. Four two six ERA. Seven walks in six and a third. That is a blemish. But he's been throwing the ball well of late. Andres Torres comes in. He will go to left field and hit third next inning. Ninth in the Giants lineup. And a foul off the bat of Dominic Brown, and it's no balls in one strike. Well, hopefully, we'll hear some news on Santiago Casillo. Foul through the legs of Kiros. According to our notes, this is the First time Dominic Brown has ever faced that bill. And a toss to keep Ben Revere close. Take by Dominic Brown, one ball and two strikes. Yeah, there's the 72 footer, Team Oracle. And America's Cup is coming to the Bay Area. It is going to be some kind of spectacle. That thing is low flying. Get up the middle, and Affelt's got it. He will underhand it to Belt, and that'll end the inning. So nice job by Casilla and Affelt. And we will head to the night. Some of the happenings here at the ballpark, including a two out RBI single for Barry Zito. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. 
Chad Durbin, the new pitcher now for the Phillies. Love the time that he has come in. You see a lot of guys coming out of Philly bullpen that have sink. He's got sink. It's low 90s, high 80s sink. He's got a uh, curveball slider changeup. He'll give you a, really a, he'll, he'll throw everything. Sergio Romo getting heated up. See if this pop up will reach the seats. And it does by a couple of rows, and it's 0 and 1. Dominic Brown, after his at bat, he goes out to left field. Crawford has a home run off of Durbin. And he takes this one inside, one ball and no strikes. And they have consistently stayed on that inside corner to Brandon Crawford, just like Brandon Belt. Dolino, good job today. Yeah, he's done a nice job. I think so too. Hit on the ground is short. Rollins has it. Crawford one for four. You see the Oracle 72 footers coming by and it's a spectacle. 11 man crews and just those little blades. That's it. That's all it's in the water. And this is a one man crew before the game. <laughs> well, what does that do? Uh, well, it lights up. So it's a pod. Yeah. You don't know what you're going to see out there in the cove. It's a one man pod. And he made it himself. Do it yourself, kid. I'm telling you, man. It's amazing what they sell at Costco these days. Your, your garage is big enough and you got the tools. <laughs> There we go. It's all lit up. I mean, better show at night, though, right? Oh yeah. But nevertheless, it's still hysterical. How could you even conceive of something like that? Outside the key rows, one and two. Never know what you're going to get at this ballpark, whether you're inside or outside. That's hit on the ground foul is Billy Hayes decided that nah I'm not going after that so one. We got a little better effort down there with Billy Hayes trying to protect this <laughs> catcher. Doesn't Billy Hayes let's go. Billy's got the. The feet in cement going this afternoon. Well Tyra Uematsu who's doing the catching. Almost got hit. Foul back. Here it is again. All right Billy I got this one right Billy. Uh, yeah, he's going to tell us that he had everything under control. And Kiro's out swinging on the breaking ball. Stay tuned for the post game wrap in just a bit. And I'll also talk about the game with Murph and Mac tomorrow morning on KMBR 680. Murph and Mac were here today. We had a chance to talk to him. You talked to him this morning. I did. They were a little concerned. You the know Giants what? had lost a couple in a row. I bet they didn't even ask you about it. They spent at least 40 minutes in my 15 minute segment of talking about let's go. <laughs> Here's Andres Torres. And the pitch is high. But there is concern. And they pretty much are the pulse of the fans. Just talking about what fans are talking about. Let's nice change it. One ball and one strike. Yep. Sharks, sweatshirts, jackets, t shirts, hats. Everybody's rooting for the Sharkies. Warriors tonight. The pitch. And it's high to Torres. 
two balls in one strike. Romo in the bullpen. Is that a tiger hat? It is. Where are the tigers? Let's see. Get lost behind some of the padding on our scoreboard here at the park. Up oh, there in Washington, D.C. tonight. There's a swing and a miss by Torres. Well, they're on top of the American League Central, 19 and 11, off to a good start. Yeah, they got rained out last night. Seen a lot of rainouts early on this year. And Torres out swinging. So that'll end it here in the eighth, and we will go to the ninth. It's a three to one lead for the Giants and the Phillies at the top of the order coming up. Giants post game live today right here in Comcast Sports in the Bay Area. Join David Feldman and Ahmed Farid as they will go to the Giants clubhouse to get reaction from this game. And you'll get live reports from game two in San Antonio as the Warriors take on the Spurs. And the 49ers will also discuss their new stadium name. All that and more. AT&T, Uber, Sportsnet Central right after Giants post game live. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and tune up. Your oil change tune up and smog experts. 19th game that Sergio Romo has been in. 12 for 13 save ops, 18 strikeouts against one walk. And these are the original gamer babes from heaven, and they are into it. Here's Rollins. Rollins takes a strike. Rollins 0 for 1. This is regular season at bats against Romo lifetime. Outside to Rollins, he doubled in the sixth inning. He's one for three. Giants three, Phillies one here in the ninth. Rollins lines this one down the right field line. That's a base hit. So Pence will get to it. It's a leadoff double. And that'll bring up Franson. Well, that's the beauty of a two run lead. Because even with the leadoff double, Romo can still put all of his concentration on the hitter. Fourth inning, Kevin Franson hit a home run. 
He's talking about a stranger who's going to be facing an old friend. It looked like he got over that strange feeling. Cito had a great day. The only blemish on his report card was that swing of the bat. Johnson swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Michael Young to follow. This is a pop up into right field. It's a long run for Pence. Pence is going to make the catch, tumble. He will spin and throw, and Rollins gets to third. And the Giants really don't care about that. They needed the out, and they got the out. Now, that really wasn't that easy of a play when you consider the obstacle that is over there. I mean, as a right fielder, you're coming over the sideline. You know the mound is there. You're. You have to be watching the, the ball, but it definitely takes his legs out from underneath him as he sort of stubbed his toe on the mound. Jimmy Rollins heads up with his speed and easy take a third, but as you point out, guy, that doesn't mean anything. So here's Young. Young today is 0 for 3. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. During the regular season, he's faced Romo twice. He's 0 for 2. They're getting ready to play after this game. And there's that slider, and it's down and away for a ball. One ball and one strike. Swing and a miss. One and two. Absolute perfect location. His command is, is so big, you, you really do take it for granted. Just cuts him right on the outside corner. And now he's got the big frisbee. He can throw him off of that. And that's how he has finished off a lot of right handers. And he'll also go front door with that, with that slider. Two and two. Utley on deck. Now it's three and two. So now he's got to get in that strike zone. You do not want to walk the tie and run. Three balls and two strikes. And he walked him. Tried to come back over that little two seam fastball and he just missed a bit low. So here's Utley. Utley is 0 for 3. Rollins at third. Young is at first. And Utley takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. Cuts the outside corner for a quick advantage. Giants bullpen, 2.6 ERA. That's the best in the National League. He rose setting up off the plate. And that's where Romo throws it, and it's one ball and one strike. Oh, nice attempt for the second pitch. He cut the first pitch, which had his movement coming back into Utley. There's a two-seam fastball with movement going away. 
just a bit low. And as it was low, pretty good take there from Utley's perspective. As he's looking for a mistake up, something to drive. And that's out of play off the end of the bat. It's now one and two. One ball and two strikes. A long set by Romo and the pitch and he shoots this one in the center field a base hit. One runs going to score. Blanco's throw goes all the way to third and beating the throw is young and it's a 3 2 ball game. And that's a risk. Now the risk was if you're going to go for it you're going to give up the back runner he's going to get the score position at second base. He made the decision. He overthrew the cutoff man. This is a total gamble throw. I mean, they almost pulled it off. But Utley is watching it, and he rounds first base. If he sees that throw go over the cutoff's head, he's gone. So here's Young. Young, it's a high fly ball to right. This should tie the game. Pence has got it. His throw home is a good throw, but it's offline. And it's a three to three ball game. Nice effort by Hunter Pence. And good at bad for Gelman Young. Didn't waste any time. He got good momentum coming into the throw. It was a good tag from Michael Young. And had it been a little more online, it would have given he rose a chance to put the tag on, but we got a brand new ball game. So here's Ruiz with Utley at third and a slider for a strike, and it's 0 and 1. And that's out of play. It's now no balls and two strikes. And it's low one and two. Get out into left center field, hit pretty well, and it's going to be Blanco who puts it away. So the Phillies tie it up. It'll be the top of the order coming up. It's a 3 3 ball game.
bottom of the ninth. New pitcher now for Philadelphia is going to be the reliever, Mike Adams. 16th time that he's come in. He's been a workhorse. Saw him in yesterday's game. 19 strikeouts at 13 innings. He has excellent stuff. He's got a low 90s fastball. He'll two seam and four seam. Curveball, slider, changeup. And he'll throw everything. Two home runs allowed, 13 innings, and he's going to face the top of the Giants lineup. So it'll be Blanco, Scudero, and Sandoval. Blanco is one for three. In at third is Young. And Blanco trying to lay down a bunt rolls it foul. Well, if he could get on base, there's an opportunity to steal because Adams is one of the slowest out of the stretch in the league. And a high strike. It's nothing in two. And Gregor Blanco questioning Dan Bellino, the plate umpire, about the the height of that pitch. Blanco hits it off his foot. It's no balls and two strikes. High one and two. Pretty easy take there. Yeah, that's a much better pitch if you're going to throw a fastball away. If you throw it off the plate, knee high. By throwing it up and away, I mean the guy sees that early on, and it just he just quits on it. He knows it's it's a ball. Easy take. Two and two. Scooter over. Full count. Try to wrap around that slide on that outside corner and did not miss by much. Watch the glove work of Ruiz as he tucks this thing in to try and frame. This by about four to five inches. Blanco will step out. Three and two, big pitch coming up here to Blanco. Rolls this one slowly to Franson, and everybody's going to be safe. Should be a hit. Well, that was going to be a tough play no matter what. If he could have fielded it cleanly and kept his legs, because Gregor Blanco is going to put some speed on the play. If he flips it to Adams, they're going to get him. And that was his only chance. A do or die flip. So the Giants get what they wanted a leadoff hitter on who could steal a base. So here's Scudero. 
Blanco stole a bag in the fifth inning. So now I'm sure the cat and mouse game is going to start. And his only defense is to make sure that Blanco stops because once he commits to home, he's not quick at all. But the guy behind the plate is Carlos Ruiz is a very good thrower. He can make up some of it. Blanco goes and the throw. They got him. And that's called by Alfonso Marquez. You see the jump and watch how quickly Ruiz gets out. And that's a good call. So good defense employed by the Phillies. And they get what they want. So it's 0 and 1 to Scudero. So it's a ball and a strike to Scudero. Adams has slowed the pace down to a snail's pace. And Marco Scudero says, wait a second, let's just start this over. Good, tight to the slider to get the second strike. Perfect pitch. Down the left field line, a long run for Brown, and Brown is not going to get there. It's foul, and it's one and two. Pablo Sandoval get ready to hit. One and two. Get into right center field. That's going to fall. Scudero is going to go for two and maybe more. Ramirez is going to pick it up and Scudero is at second base. Well, that's how you make it forget about a caught stealing. You hit a double, put yourself in score position. Two seed fastball. They tried to the backdoor in the outside corner, leaked out over the middle of the plate, stays inside it beautifully, and slices it away from Rivera. And Rivera makes a pretty good play just to stop it. And that may have saved an extra 90 feet. Yep, I think you're right. So here's Sandoval. Sandoval does not have a lot of success against Adams. He's two for 11. And this is foul down the left field line and out of play. The best arm of the Phillies outfield is in the left field with Dominic Brown. 
You don't have much of an arm in the center with Revere and a pretty good arm with Delman Young and right. I mean, I'm a little surprised they're pitching to Sandoval, to be honest with you. Pence is 0 for 6 lifetime against Adams. And then you got the pitcher spot. Driven to right. Young is going to reach up and make the catch. And now Scudero's got to hustle back, and he just made it. Whew. Two outs. That was a screaming seed out to Delvin Young and out the crack of the bat. Marco Scudero said, Nobody catches that. And it almost cost him. Watch the break from Scudero. He is off to the races. But with Young playing well over towards the right center field gap, Scudero really had to regroup. And Tim Flannery blew a long out trying to get him to stop and go back. And he just did get back. So here's Pence. Yeah, he's been the best hitter in this series against the Phillies for the Giants. Fly ball center field. Revere on the move. Still on the move, and he's going to make the catch in front of the wall. And we will go to the 10th inning here at 3 3. Sports Net Bay Area. It'll be Jim Cozumore. He will host it like he always does. Mitch Richmond, he's going to talk about the Warriors. Ray Ratto, he's going to talk about everything. And Mark Purdy, well, he's going to talk about probably the Sharks. It's the San Jose Sharks. And Mark Purdy writes for the San Jose Mercury News. So Bruce Bochy is going to come out. He's going to get the ball from Romo. Javier Lopez is going to come in. The new pitcher will be the lefty. Lopez. Well, they announced the pinch hitter, Freddie Galvis, who is a switch hitter. And that is who Javier Lopez will face here to start things off in the 10th. Let's take a look at numbers for Javier Lopez. 15th time that he has come in. Lefty's hit 250 often. This is his 15th appearance, seven and a third inning. So you know he's been used in situations and has not thrown a lot of appearances where he's thrown a whole inning. For a second.
So here's Galvis. Who has good speed. And a strike to Galvis. He saw his numbers. Hitting 250. And that next pitch is low and away to even the count at a ball and a strike. Swing and a miss, one and two. Ben Revere on deck and then Dominic Brown. And this is hit out to Hunter Pence who makes the catch. And that'll bring up Ben Revere. More speed. Although Ben Revere is a, a left handed hitter. Which definitely favors Javier Lopez. But a threat to bunt. He can push and he can drag. Just a bit outside. It's not likely Angel Pagan can come off the bench, although we don't know that for sure. There's a tapper. He's going to carry him out to Scudero. And Revere is going to beat it out. As Chad Godin heads down to the bullpen. So here's Dominic Brown. Well, we talked about. The importance of the stolen base attempt in the bottom of the ninth with Gregor Blanco on, and the Phillies defended it well. And it's a similar situation here. But you know, Charlie Manuel wants to use Revere's speed, and he can steal a base. So let the games begin. Process of holding that runner on, giving your catcher a chance to throw out. And a strike to Brown. Brown came in as a pinch hitter and faced Jeremy Affelt and it went back to Affelt and that ended the eighth inning. The pitch is wide to even the count at a ball and a strike. Gets away from the Phillies bullpen. One ball and one strike. A 3 3 tie here in the 10th. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. He rose throw. Got him. Perfect throw. Harley Manuel is thinking about coming out. Well, Freddie Gallus can't believe it. But the accuracy of this throw is what makes the play. Jazz may have caught a break. Very close. Marquez sort of blocked out the the bag we couldn't see as to whether or not the tag was put on before he touched the base. But you see the reaction from Kiro's psych. But it, it was a brilliant throw. 
But Charlie Manuel may have a pretty good point. Because that one ankle looked like he had been in that bag before he was tagged. Nevertheless, big out. Hang with him. And Brown strikes out to end the inning. Bell's going to lead things off. Buster Posey looks like he's going to hit for Bell. The pitcher now for the Phillies is going to be the veteran Antonio Bastardo. In his fourth year at the big league level, this is what he has done. He's been fantastic. But it's weird if you look at his numbers. Lefty's hitting 214, righty's hitting 056. He has chewed righties up. And when you face Bastardo, you see a fastball that's. 90 ish with a good hard slider. Yep, it is the Bastardo slider. And he also throws a changeup. This past weekend on a Friday night, this ended the ball game. And Buster Posey's never faced Bastardo before. Arias is on deck. And then it'll be Brandon Crawford. And a fastball high. One ball and no strikes. See the numbers for Buster Posey this year. 282. Four home runs, 19 driven in. Swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. I mean, that's how you want a guy like Posey to swing in a 1 0 count. And he was swinging to send everybody home. And Bastardo wins the challenge. Giants had a two run lead. Going to the ninth, the Phillies tied it up. Here we are in the tenth. And this is in the center field, and that'll be a base hit. And Joaquin Arias now is going to hit. In a perfect world, you would like to have the luxury of pinch running for Buster Posey, but it's really tough to do right now. You're slowly running out of players, and if Pagan isn't available, you're playing with 24. So here's Arias. Down low, one ball and no strikes.
swing and a miss. One ball and one strike. There's the slider. He had good rip on it. Saw it early. Good swing and a 1 0 count. Doubtful you would see any play put on here with Posey at first base. And the 1 1, and now Arya shows bunt. And it's a pretty good bunt. And Ruiz can only go to first. And they do a good job. Posey now in scoring position. So Bochi puts the bunt down. And Arias shows it late and does a nice job of getting it down. Thought when it first came off the bat, Ruiz was going to have a chance in second. Not so. So a productive out. And just like that, the Giants get a runner in scoring position. Nice and job. It'll be Brandon Crawford, who is one for four and 0 for two lifetime against Bastardo with a couple of strikeouts. And that's fouled on the left field line. It's off the tarp. Crawford yesterday had a two hit day. His first hit of the afternoon was his first at bat. He hit a ball down the left field line. He said it was slicing foul, and then the wind took it and blew it back fair. Nice. So I thought all of a sudden my luck had changed on that one hit. Down low to even the count at a ball and a strike. Delman Young is very deep in right field. And that would certainly help Buster Posey score on a base hit. Now, Bustardo is not an easy guy to, to pull if you hit from the left side. One and two. Giants looking for a hit to send everybody home. One and two to Crawford. And it's outside two balls two strikes. Guillermo Key Rose is on deck. Posey led the inning off with a base hit. He's at second base with one out. In the dirt. And Buster Poach is going to try to make it to throw to third. Is not in time. And that changes everything. And the only way you get a jump like that is if you anticipate it in the dirt. You can have no hesitation. Watch Posey very quickly off and running. And that is huge in what the situation now presents itself to Brandon Crawford. That is terrific base running. It really is. It's just good instinct is what it is. But that is going to bring in the infield. It's going to bring in the outfield. And uh, it's really going to force Crawford to maybe take a little bit out of his swing to put it in play. And the other Factor is if you just threw a breaking ball in the dirt, you may not want to snap one off as hard because you have a runner at third base for fear that it might get by your catcher. And you have a tendency to leave it up. And right now you're looking for something up. You need enough fly ball in the outfield to score that runner. Now everybody in the outfield comes in about five steps. It's three and two to Crawford. And he walked them. And here comes Kiros. Saturday night. Guillermo Kiros did this. Brandon League, the closer of the Dodgers, a little sinker that didn't sink. And as soon as he made contact, he knew this game was over. Well, the outfield is still going to play shallow. Rollins and Utley have to make a decision on a ground ball. Can they turn two? So here's Key Rose. 
Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. He's probably going to see that pitch a lot. Well, that's the Bastardo slider. And definitely going out of the strike zone first pitch. A little jumpy perhaps. But you don't have any speed with Kiros. So if a ball does get hit to a middle infield, a good chance they could turn a pair. You're looking for a fly ball. And that's fouled and it's nothing in two. Ozzy at third. Crawford is at first. And now Kiros has got a battle. He's behind in the count, 0 and 2. And I would be shocked if this pitch is a strike. Here it comes. Swing and a miss. He got him. Back foot slider. And that's his bread and butter. So Bastardo gets the strikeout he was pitching for. And that's about as nasty as nasty can be. That's a perfect pitch with zero fear of putting it in the dirt with Reese back that back there behind the plate. Well, here's Andres Torres. Torres is one for two lifetime against Bastardo. And he shoots this one in the right field, and that's the ball game, and the Giants are going to win it here in the 10th inning. Andres Torres with a base hit. So the Giants had to work very hard to win one game in this three game series. But boy did it ever turn out to be a big win. And it also gets Sergio Romo off the hook. And Andres Torres he gets to be the hero of this game. So they don't come easy do they. No, they don't it just seems like it. You get a, a little slide going for the Giants. They lost the first two games of the series after winning six in a row. To turn that worm around and stop that slide, it's hard. The Phillies played their tails off today, but you mentioned the success that Torres has had against Bastardo, and he knows how to approach him. He was thinking the opposite way the whole time. Stays inside it nicely, and here's the reward a walk off base hit. The Giants fans go home happy, and more importantly, the Giants take some momentum into. A four game series with the Braves which promises to be some more tough baseball. Well you're right. I mean that's that's a very good point. You got. Maybe one of the. Most talented teams coming in. Starting tomorrow night. And uh, it's good to have one in the win column before that game is played tomorrow. All right let's check in. With ABG. All right, Jay, we've got the hero of the game, Andres Torres. Another walk-off win for the Giants. That makes five. And just, Andres, talk about how you guys continue to be able to do this. Uh, we just, you know, keep, uh, like I said, give everything we got. So, you know, I just try to, you know, get good pitch to hit. And uh, Ciro pitched a great game. You know, we, we played really good, you know. just We just have to continue to just play like this. You said you got a good pitch to hit. Take us through that at bat against Bastardo. You faced him before, you uh, one and two with a walk. So how much did that experience help going into that at bat? Uh, to be honest with you, I was I was trying to get on top of the play and look something. He throws some slider to uh, to Kiros, but you know he, he I was ready for anything. So I just try to get the bear on the ball and that's it. <laughs> Everybody contributed today. Uh, I want to talk about the Posey impact. He doesn't play all day and he gets in there and in one inning he gets on base, heads up base running. He's always making a difference. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Always ready. Always ready to go. Great player. And uh, that's how we do it. Just always everybody. You know, we are a team. We play together. We do everything as a, as a union and that's how we win ball games. Lastly, you did touch on Barry Zito, but you guys needed a quality start out of your starting pitchers and Barry did it today. What did you see from him? He's been pitching great, great location. You know, our pitchers are really good. He just throw the ball where he wanted and that's how he's been great. Andres Torres with the walk-off. Congratulations, Dwayne. 
All right, thanks, Amy, and thanks to Andres Torres uh, for allowing us to get to our barbecue at a reasonable hour. And, uh, and Mike, really, I, I, the, the point was made by Andres Torres, and Amy G didn't even have to ask him about it. But, uh, but this is a terrific start for Barry Zito. Well, another one, I mean, he's just been so bulletproof here at home this year. I mean, he's only given up two runs this year. And, and uh, I mean, when he goes out there, you just feel like the entire team relaxes. And that's important when you're trying to stop a losing streak. I mean, he really did what good stoppers do. You, you put zeros up there. You relax the offense. You relax the defense with the way he pitched. So excellent job from him. But just some, just some gut-wrenching grinding at bats there at the end. I mean, the Giants almost pulled it out in the bottom of the ninth. Uh, and then there was some frustration going into the tenth. But a lead-out base hit for Buster Posey. Good thoughts on the bench. Everybody sort of rallied. And then instinctive base running. That play that he made on that, that little ball that just didn't get away very far from Carlos Ruiz. Posey takes off immediately and he gets into third base, changed the whole inning, and that was the difference in the game. I think we said in the open, little ball was probably going to win it today. Final score Giants four, Phillies three. Eastern's Giants post game live with interviews and the wrap is coming up. But first, let's go to the Sportsnet Central studio for an update.